Hey guys, Jen Cravasi, Jekyll Bates, and this should be a fun one. It's different for me. It's something that we've kind of been kicking around doing for the holidays as presents and whatnot, but I'm here in the shop at Bullshad Swim Baits, and I have not made a whole lot of content the last couple weeks because I've been hustling for our first show of the season, which is The Gathering. It's a swim baits only show, which is awesome. I'm filming this on a, what is today, Tuesday. So, um, this is what I'm up to, and I've been doing a couple of nets, uh, partnered with Kelly Barefoot from Catch Outdoors, and he was gracious to gift me a net when I went up and saw him and uh, did some filming and stuff up there with some good folks a couple weekends ago. This right here is uh, going to be for a good friend of Sean McCoy's, and of course by the time this airs it'll probably already be hopefully in his buddy's hand, but referencing this trout picture, I'm going to pop that up in the top of the screen somewhere up there. We're going to do this net. So the biggest thing to remember is that you need to sand it down because all of these nets have got um, like a lacquer finish on them and we're just going to do a fade. So I have sanded and I've primed it. The primer that I'm using today is from Badger Airbrushes. Now this also says that you can use this as an adhesion promoter and a um, and a surface primer for resin as well. However, I don't know the qualifications for DLAM. I am very confident that the stuff that I use, which is an automotive self-etching primer that I have used on resin, is a good product. So I have not tested these on resin swim baits yet. I'm thinking about doing it on uh, some of maybe some of our older stuff and just to see, and then I'll just take it out and beat the crap out of it and see what it does. But in the meantime, we are going to put this on a tripod and I'm going to finish this as dry now. I have heat set it a little bit. It's air dried, gassed out, the primer is ready to go. We're going to paint this in the rainbow trout that uh, Sean McCoy's buddy would like. He doesn't know he's getting it, but Sean sent me some reference pictures, so let's get started. I do have my fan on today because there's a lot of, I'm clear coating upstairs at the same time that I'm doing this down here. I'm kind of rotating through stuff. I'm working down here and I'm letting the clear coat cure off for about 45 minutes to an hour at a time before I do the next round. So I'm on round one, getting ready to go do round two, but by the time I do round two, this will be done. So that's kind of the way I set up my, my workstation on clear coat days. I try to minimize the work that I've got down here and add one off pieces or two off pieces, uh, something that's not a lot of time consuming work for me because the concentration on clear coat days is in fact clear coat. So while that's going on up there, I've taped this off and these are not easy. Um, I'm probably the polyester, the net, uh, the nets that are not rubberized, which you kind of need for any fish. Um, I'm not going to be selling these with, uh, without a rubber net. So this first net I had on my socials, it has got a really thick, um, like a brush on it's a KBS. And I will go ahead and name that because I've kind of gotten away from KBS and you're about to see why. It's very difficult to do a large project like this unless you spray on the KBS. And the only thing that's really available to me to go mass production is their KBS Max. And that is, it's a two part that you have to, just like the Tamco is upstairs, but um, this is the brush on. And unfortunately this has bubbled too much for me. Um, this is gonna be a keeper net but the patterns on this brook trout, the pattern turned out really, really well, so I'm happy with that. But unfortunately, this is something that I would never sell. So this is, this is gonna be a keeper for me, which I'm happy with, um, but this was an absolute pass until I got to the clear coat, and then it was an epic fail because the clear coat bubbled, and uh, it used to be really good. It's been a while since I've used KBS, 
I'm no longer sponsored by KBS. That's not the motivation behind me saying that it's not good, but one of the reasons I get away from products is if they've changed or it's no longer applicable. They're still, I still use them for crankbaits on occasion. Uh, I do still have some KBS in the shop. It's just not something that I do anymore. Now the second net that I've done, the second net is a little bit better. And if you're looking at this one right here, this is a brown trout. This turned out really, really well. I'm very happy with the outcome. All of these uh, dots on here are hand done. So every single thing went in by hand. And this is a mimic. I don't know if you can see in this light, this weird light in this office. I still have not gotten the lighting exactly where I want it. Um, but this is a representation of a nine pound brown trout that Kelly Barefoot caught. So this is gonna be gifted back to him. And thanks for uh, collaborating with me on this particular set of projects that we're getting ready to do. This is a Cortland net and it's one that I had uh, sitting at my house. And then, um, yeah, so super happy with this. The reference of the fish that he caught on undisclosed waters is right here. So this is the difference between Tamco and good clear coat and a brush on. So night and day, super clean, very, very adhesive, looks good. So there you have it. Now that this, um, this Badger primer has dried out and cured, and it's, been, it's actually been sitting off camera for quite a while, a um, few hours. We should be good to go. I'll leave that in frame for you guys. It's, uh, I want to say it's Stein Nyler Res. Stein, 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 or Sten, Stein Nyler Res. Somebody out there is going to know how to pronounce it better than me. Y'all knock yourselves out. Stein Nyler Res, that's what I'm thinking about. Hopefully that's right. Hopefully I'm not butchering the name Badger. I apologize way, way in advance for that. I have a Wicked Opaque White. This is the Detail White. We've already shaken up the bottle. And I'm just going to get the entire thing over this. I'm going to do two sides, so... figured I would give you guys something fun to watch over the weekend, something that maybe you can think about doing. Make sure that you are sanding down the wood first and get all that lacquer off or as much as you can before you prime it because you want maximum adhesion because I would hope, it would be my hope, that these things are going to get used for trout and panfish. Uh, the nets are tapeable, but it's not an easy process and you can already see that the tape is coming up a little bit. but the nets can be cleaned off after the clear coat's applied. And you certainly know it, the water will wear it off in time, but you want this net as clean as possible if you're gonna be putting any fish, if you're netting fish into this. I would imagine a lot of folks are gonna use them as wall hangers. And it is the same type of clear coat, top coat that is synonymous with the auto industry. And also with like tumblers and things like that. There's, there's a lot of uses for what I have. If you're noticing the reference picture, you're going to see that there is a lot of gold on this particular rainbow trout that's uh, that's the ask for this. So in order to make that gold really shine well, I'm painting over the white with black. And one of the reasons, and I think I've probably said this in other videos as well, one of the reasons I like to do that is because metallics turn out exceptionally well against black backgrounds. So we're gonna add some metallic gold to this to represent the shine that these rainbow trout have. Same with any trout. They really have a beautiful sheen in the water. So I'm taking this black almost all the way down to the bottom of the bait and I'm being consistent. So 
this is going to be the, the belly of the trout, and the top is going to be where the black is now. And it's okay if it's not an even line. In fact, it's almost encouraged because really you want to mimic what it looks like. Now, one of the things that I'm going to be doing with this project here is I'm going to heat set this between colors every single time off camera. And this is, even if you're not into painting lures, this is a crossover project that you guys can do at home, especially if you're crafty. I'm going to add a couple of little divots to this side just to kind of represent the belly so you can see where I've come up with the airbrush just a little bit. Um, but this is something that you guys can do. If you have an airbrush set up, you can do it at home. And it makes a really, really awesome present for anybody that is fishing trout streams or pan fishes. This net is large enough to even grab some bass. So any fly fishermen, even spin fishing. And if you're interested in these nets, by all means, and you don't want to go through all the steps to paint them and seal them and all that, um, I'm going to have the Jekyll Baits and Catch Outdoors links below where you can get these things. We're really excited about putting them out there for you guys. But these will be available in the upcoming months. We'll, we'll keep you guys posted on how to get a hold of one of these beautiful trout nets. I'm going to be adding the metallic gold onto the black here. And I'm using this tape kind of as a shield. Um, it's not that I'm disappointed in the 3M, but this 3M multi-surface safe release is not a recommended tape that I would use for lips or anything like that with crankbaits or even this because um, it just doesn't stick enough. So my preferred tape, if I'm going to tape crankbait lips or uh, anything like tails, lips on the swim baits, is that real inexpensive stuff that you get from Walmart. It just it adheres very well. It's about half the price, sometimes less than half. Um, yes, I'm airbrushing left-handed. Um, base coats are easy. It's just controlling them. I can I can paint with either hand. I've always been able to do that, which is kind of fun because I think it also prevents me from getting carpal tunnel as easy. Um, I just switch to the other hand. So. All I'm doing here is just coming back over with a good couple of layers of gold over top of the black and that really brings out the shine and the metallics here. And each layer is going to get dried off, off camera, like I said. Um, I don't want anything wet on this particular project. I want everything dried between sets, but I am going to just finish up this gold here. And again, I'm just fading this up. And you really don't want any black left that's visible underneath the gold. You want it heavy enough to where you're going to get the shine and that darker back. And I don't know if you can see how well this resonates, that metallic flash, but it does so much better against black than it does white. So that's always the preferred base color for this. Add just a little bit more. Hopefully you guys are all doing well today. How are you? This is probably the only production type video that I'm going to have. I'm going to be traveling this weekend. And then I've got the annual salmon trip with my besties up in upstate New York next weekend. 
so I'm sure I'll have a bunch of shorts and hints and help and tricks, tips, all that good stuff that I'll load up on the YouTube channel and also the socials, so just stay around for that. And uh, if I hook on any bigs while I'm salmon fishing, I will definitely post that stuff up. If not, as it happens, shortly thereafter. Now that the heavy spraying is done, we can concentrate on the pattern of this. So on top of the now dry gold, I've got an acrylic ink pen. And if you guys are looking at the reference photo, you can see that there is a lateral line that goes through just about straight down the middle of it. So we're hand drawing that in. It's gonna be covered over with red, but it, it's gonna look cool. We're gonna do it on both sides. One at a time, I'm gonna dry this and then we're gonna flip it. And then just about the same. So I'm using this center pin where the net is gonna be attached to the holder, which are that's sold separately. That doesn't come as part of the package. I don't know if we're gonna have it as an option, but if we do, I'll let you know. Keep your hand as steady as possible. Just come straight down the middle. And this is a Uniball Signo Acrylic Metallic. I don't know if the camera can see that, but that is what we got. Uniball Signo. These are made in Japan. They're very good pens. I've always signed with Uniballs. Um, started doing the Arteza, Arteza, the paint pens, and this stands the test of time, you guys. So these Uniballs, I love signatures. I love fine line detailing with them. The reason that I'm doing silver, we're going to come over with red and it's going to stand out on that lateral line because if you're looking at this reference photo, there's a lot of pinkish red on this bait. So I'm going to do two sets of black, the dots on this bait. I'm going to drop one in the background, then we're going to come over and do a little bit of um, transparent. And then I'm going to do the reds all that kind of good stuff over top of that and then we'll do the top layer of black dots on this bait. So I have this stencil from Anarchy Model UK from Brian Best. I use it for a lot of the larger swim bait trout patterns if it's a rainbow. If you're looking at the photograph there is a lot of spots on this particular one but this one we're gonna try and stay above the lateral line and I'm gonna just blend very lightly, not super dark. We're gonna put the darker stuff in on that top layer. And we gotta do both sides, so I'm gonna obviously heat set off camera. And I'm trying to stay like right around the lateral line and just above because there are far fewer of the dots. And you just need to be careful that you don't overspray on something like this. This is one of the few occasions where it's okay to start on the stencil and not come across like you would on some other things. But I want a really light background on this because that's just going to add depth to it. And you want it all the way around. Apologies on the compressor. And then flip it, make sure you're doing the right side. Use this white belly as a guideline. And then just super light. Now I'm not gonna intentionally go below the lateral line on the depth layer of dots simply because we're going to add those in on our final layer of dots. And then I'm just going to run this up the side here just very lightly. So I've tried to stay, it's just like coloring books, try and stay in the lines here on our background layer, maybe just a few towards here, but not very much. I've got some transparent white Createx. These are the standard colors. The transparent is obviously see-through. There's red on here and if this were a swim bait 
I would have probably put the red down first and then added in the gold, but because there's just so much gold on here, I did the gold first, but with transparent paint, all I'm really trying to do here is accent the red and give kind of differences in tone once I bring that out. And having white behind it is going to give you a whole lot better red color. But I also want to blend this in as well. And you can still see that lateral line and silver is there. That's what we want. A couple little darker areas on this. And because I've got this down, this, this bench gets a lot of heavy use. So... It never hurts to add a little piece of paper to keep like little particles and stuff from sticking. So I'm just going to go over this again on this side to kind of stagger the line a little bit and give some areas where I'm not covering it and then just kind of widen out a little bit as we get closer to the net portion of the wood. And then get a little bit darker here in just a couple of spots. And then we're going to come back over with red. I've always liked to use the Spectratex metallic red for the main part of these rainbow trout. I just think that it gives the, it's like a perfect shade of that pinkish red. And on this pattern, the only place where that line is broken is right up here. So I'm just gonna break the line somewhere back here. We're not, obviously we're not doing the head of the trout per se. Uh, we're just representing the colors on this. I'm going to heat set this, flip to the other side, just kind of feather this in. My pressure is right around 25, which is fairly high, but there's metallic in this Spectratex, so I want to make sure that mica is coming out. break here and then on up to the throat section of this would-be rainbow. If you find that you have a little bit of excess, if it's blown out just a bit quick and I do, a, I see a spot here, just take a q-tip and then just lightly roll it across any excess and then you can come back and respray that section at a lower PSI which is what I'm going to do here there we go I'm going to stay on this side of the net and I'm just going to give a hint of that silver. I'm not coming all the way back through because this is going to be red. I just kind of want to stagger this line a little bit and then dry it real quick and then come back over with that red. And you just want to stay consistent on both sides. So just kind of come through a little bit, especially where it's pink. Just run that right back through. So I have taken the tip off of the airbrush so that it's exposed the tip of the needle. Now a very low pressure spray 
just to bring in. Probably doesn't sound low pressure, does it? We're just gonna come in and hit that red line. Come right over, ah, and I've been having problems with my airbrush all weekend and there's an example. So how do we fix that? Again, come back with your Q-tip and if it's fresh paint and you've already dried the underside of that, you can just wet the tip a little bit of the, the Q-tip and just wipe that straight up. There really isn't anything that you can do, whether it's a crankbait or a resin swim bait that you can't fix. So a lot of you new paintbrush artists out there, sorry, airbrush artists, um, if you screw up a pattern on a crankbait, it's okay. Like you literally can't screw it up. You just paint it white again, blank canvas, start over. The only thing that you might not be able to do is, uh, there we go. Um, the only thing you might not be able to do is fix transparency. Then instead of going from like a ghost pattern, you just kind of go into uh, like a solid color mold. Just trace that down a couple of times. And there's your solid red line. So this would be one of those times where it is handy to have a second airbrush available. If you don't, just change the color out and rinse it out from the cup because red and black obviously are the hardest colors to get rid of. Um, I've got a 15 PSI right now and I'm using this illustration black, which is somewhere between an opaque and a transparent. It's just a really smooth flow that I get out of this particular black, so I really like it for detailing or doing smaller things like uh, the next layer of dots. So all I'm doing here is I'm just filling in the blanks and these are gonna be darker. And you see that I'm, I'm kinda doing this in a pattern that allows me to feather that in. I'm not doing a straight line here. And I am going a little bit further down and again, it's just a guide. There's really nothing saying that it has to be every single dot on the last reference photo you have. Just get as close as you can. Make sure the color tones are accurate. And then this brings, you can see everything else is in the background. And now you have a lot of stuff that's lifted up. You just come back over and you don't want to go crazy. You don't want to get too much and you can fade that down a little bit more. I am gonna add some white to the bottom of this on the other side, but I am gonna heat set this first. Just hit this other side. And I'm just kind of moving the airbrush up and down. I'm not doing a straight line, because that does affect how it sprays. The spray pattern of that is gonna change, and it's gonna add just a little bit more depth to it. And I am gonna bring some of this down into the bottom now. And then bring this back up along the top and just kind of fade that through. And now we've got some pretty good depth in this. And we've dropped that red into the background because you can see that there's quite a bit. And I'll bring red one more time over the top of that. So we are putting on the finishing touches. Gonna bring just a little more gold into this. There we go. Quick heat set. Now this part of it is something that's a little bit extra. You certainly don't have to do it, but it is kind of nice to kind of give it a little bit of 
pizzazz, I guess is the right word. Um, you are making a present for somebody, usually, or somebody cool is going to get it, whether it's somebody that's a customer or whether you're doing this for family and loved ones. And you see that I'm just kind of accenting this a little bit. And I'm finishing off this white here on the belly of this rainbow trout. Just to kind of add something a little bit extra to it. Pretty much stay on the same path here. And then just kind of curve this around. Fade that white in. And now you have a little bit something extra. Now one thing I want to do, if I can find a good blocker, is that I want to finish this, but I don't want to overspray onto the paint. So I'm just kind of holding this so I don't shoot up top as I'm finishing the white just on the belly and sides here. And there we have it. And it just kind of gives something a little bit extra to finish up this bait. I called it a bait. It's a net. But you know what I mean. We now have in our details, we have in our trout black dots, we've got the red lat line, silver lat line, the pink, I think the depth is fairly good, but there's one step, one thing that really ties in going from like two dimensional flat surface and kind of brings this to life. And that is mimicking the scales on a trout, which are super tiny. They're not big scales. Shad, the same thing. Although I see so many people put great big scales on a shad bait. Uh, but for this particular part I'm using this detail modeling M-O-T-T-L-I-N-G and I'm laying this and it's easier to do here I don't have to curve it like I do on a bait and I'm just gonna hold it down here make sure my pressure is no higher than 10 or 15 and we are just gonna add in and mimic some scales We're going to lift that up, see what it looks like. I will show you in the finished product what it looks like. It does make an amazing, amazing difference. It's probably really hard to see while I'm just sitting here and the camera is at this kind of a distance. But when you get up close, you can really see the scaling. And in the light, being what it is here in this studio, you, want, you kinda wanna lift up whatever it is you're working on and check it out from time to time to make sure that you're hitting all the spots that you need to get. And that it's actually going through. These things have a tendency to clog because the holes in them are so small. So if you have a standby or a second for the other side so you don't have to walk away and rinse it off and dry it, that's helpful. Um, but when it comes down to it, this is just a really good tool to use for scaling, especially on trout. So I'm gonna dry this. So I've kind of got this portion leaning for this and we're just gonna
scale the sides of it as well, the edges, just to be consistent with the rest of the pattern. And again, I don't know what the camera is able to pick up on this. I'm guessing it's probably not a whole lot, and I apologize for that, but I will show you the finished product at the end of this video. And the final side. Make sure you know which side's up, as it were, so that you're not putting a lot of silver down on this. Always helps to wipe it clean. And we'll start here off camera and come on. Make sure that's in frame. And just kind of flip this around. Gravity and the pressure of the airbrush is going to help press this against it once you start spraying. So that is helpful and then you just kind of look at it and make sure that you've hit all the spots that you need to hit so we're pretty much done with this really cool project for a friend of Sean McCoy's so I'm gonna take one last look at this and then we're gonna go upstairs and clear coat it and then I'll give you a reveal at the end of the video maybe a couple more spots that I could hit with the scaling. There we go. Add just a little bit more to this. Good to go. Wipe this down one more time. Make sure there's nothing on the back side there. I see just a little bit here that I want to roll off of this Q-tip. and then just finish the rest of that side. Awesome. I have an inscription I want to put on this. So let me check and see what we got to do for that. And then we're going to go upstairs to clear coat. I'm not going to show you that because the clear coat is going to really screw up my lenses, but I will show you the finished product. Just giving you guys a little bit of what this is going to look like. Obviously the black dots are going to come out with that clear coat. Super excited about how this turned out. And there it is.